Hey, it's Brianna, and I'm here for Triumphant Tuesdays. This week, we're starting a new rotation, and as I was reading through it, I realized it was about identity and helping you guys find identity and who you are outside of your eating disorders. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about how to be true to yourself despite your circumstances or different limitations you may have. We all have different limiting factors in our lives that may prevent us from doing what we want to do, but it's really important that we don't let that affect who we are. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking about my job, and I was like, yeah, like, that's too long, like, I don't like it, which I don't really like my job right now. But when I was thinking about it, like, I realized that even though it is a limiting factor for me, it, my schedule's crazy all the time, and, um... I have really long shifts and all of this stuff like I was thinking about it and I'm like yes it does limit my time but if I didn't have that job like I wouldn't have money to do things I wanted and I wouldn't have resources so sometimes it's really good to respect that and um I was also thinking about my cerebral palsy and things like that like this may sound really silly to you guys but I guess it was one of those like you have to be in my shoes to understand, but I'll explain it. For the longest time, I wanted to wear flip-flops, and I still do, but I actually can't wear flip-flops. My feet don't grip at all. Like, they don't grip the flip-flops, and they basically just fly off. But pretty much through all of high school, I would wear them anyway, because I was like, I don't want to limit myself. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I want to wear these. Like, I want to look cool like everybody else and wear like what everyone else is wearing and have that not be a problem but it was a problem and I realized that I was actually limiting my life and what I could do through wearing those flip-flops so I learned it's better not to wear them and yeah I still struggle with that my mom says that she's pretty sure God will give me a pair on the way through the door of heaven which I hope she's right because that would be really cool and with my job, as I was saying before, like, if I don't, you know, respect the schedule and how crazy it is, like, I wouldn't have time to do other things, or I'd have time, but I wouldn't have resources, like, I would have much rather made this video when I was all made up and not really tired and things like that, like, I would have rather made it, like, a lot earlier today, but I couldn't do that because of my schedule, but if I didn't have a job, I wouldn't have the time to make this because I wouldn't have a house and I wouldn't have a camera or a computer to even put this up. I mean, it'd be amazing if <laughs> we are freedom fighters started paying us to do this. Like if YouTube started paying us out, that, that would be awesome. Maybe I should suggest that. I've never really liked the concept of limits and I've had trouble with it. And I was talking to my therapist about it. She was amazing and actually helped me think about it differently. When you think about it, life is really a series of choices and those choices lead to different consequences and different outcomes like some good outcomes some bad outcomes sometimes we make really great choices and sometimes we make really horrible choices but it's all part of our life and she was like well Brianna you always have a choice and I'm like no no I don't she's like yeah you do um work had gotten to a point where I really didn't want to go to it it's gotten a little better now but it's still a struggle but she's like, you could just choose not to go to work. I'm like, no, I couldn't. And she's like, yeah, you could. But she's like, think about it. Like, when you wake up, you're making a choice to go. And she's like, you have to think of it like this. Like, you choose to go because the consequence for not going that you would end up getting later outweighs the benefit of not going. So the consequence for not going would be greater than the benefit for not going, so therefore you're choosing to go. And when I, when I thought about that, that made a lot of sense. We're not really limiting ourselves, we're just making different choices, and we have to make the best one for ourselves. What people say to us can also factor into what we perceive to be limits for ourselves, and I'm going to talk a little bit about self-imposed limits, because I learned, especially recently, that there's definitely a really fine line between actual legitimate limits and self-imposed ones. For the longest time I thought I was really bad at math and I didn't learn that I wasn't until recently. Like I said before in other videos, I passed the pharmacy tech test and I remember passing it and being shocked. 
And I got in the car and I told my dad, I'm like, I passed the test. Like, I can't believe it. He's like, I can. I always knew you could. But I was like, I'm really bad at math. I don't know how I passed it. And he said something that I'll never really forget. He was like, you're not bad at math at all. Someone just told you that when you were little. And it was a limit that you put on yourself because of something someone told you. But you're not bad at math. And now, because of that, I want to go to pharmacy school, and I always did, but I always put that limit on myself, like, I'm bad at math, like, I can't do it. But what I didn't realize is that teachers were telling me that from when I was really little, and it stuck with me. And so sometimes we should really challenge what we see to be limits. And if it's something you really want to do, and people are telling you you can't, but you think you can, you should definitely try. I was 10 I wanted to be a runner so I actually tried it even though people were telling me I couldn't because of my disability and I'm actually a pretty good runner now like definitely not the best but definitely not the worst either and I remember being in college and my PE teacher saying that's a really good time for someone with a disability and I was like nope that's just a good time for anybody and it is but I've learned through that and through my situation with my cerebral palsy is that unless you know that you personally can't do it, then you should try. If I listened to every single thing somebody told me that I couldn't do because of my disability, there'd be so many things that I didn't try. Never limit yourself until you figure out that you personally can't do that. But never let anyone, anything anyone says ever stop you like kids and one of the reasons I do is because they're extremely fearless for the most part and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they don't have all these preconceived notions in their heads about what they can or can't do and they haven't developed fear so they often face fears with much more courageousness than we have um like I've talked about like how I learned had to learn to walk when I was three but it shows me the fact that I wasn't willing to let that limit me, and that would have been a perfectly legitimate limit. Like, she can't walk, she has cerebral palsy. But I mean, I proved those people wrong, like, completely. You have to change the, I wish this could happen to, I'll make this happen, like I did. I mean, I wasn't supposed to walk, but I was like, this walker isn't going to work out for me at all. So I'm just going to make this happen. Like, I didn't wish it. I was like, this is how it's going to be. I'm going to do it. And if we approach our lives like that, it definitely makes life easier. And we will open up so many doors for us. And that's kind of how I approached recovery from my eating disorder, too. Like I said before, it had gotten to a point where it was like, okay, Brianna, recover or die. Like, there's no more options. Those are the only two. And because I just chose it, I was like, okay, failure's not an option. You have to do it. There's no other choice. Like, I was able to. And that's how I did it, is I chose to do it. <laughs> I decided that I could no matter what because I had to. And I learned that for myself, sometimes I can put limits on myself just because I'm actually afraid of failing. Or not afraid of failing, like everyone's afraid of failing. I don't think anyone wants to fail. Well, at least not most people will. But I realized that to succeed and to be successful, you have to be willing to fail. It took me forever to take my pharmacy tech test, not because I wasn't ready for it. It was because... I wasn't willing to fail and um, and not being willing to fail can hold us back in so many ways. If I wasn't willing to fail, I would have never learned to walk and if I wasn't willing to fail, I wouldn't be a pharmacy tech now, but there's so much stuff I'm still working on and one of my favorite quotes is, if I didn't fall, I would have never been given wings and that's true. You have to mess up to learn. And for the longest time, like I wasn't allowing myself to mess up at all because I'm such a perfectionist. But I realize now that I'll never learn if I don't. And I mean, I'm still struggling with that because I want to do everything perfectly, but I'll never 
learn to do something well if I'm not willing to fail. And I've failed at a lot of things in my life. I haven't been perfect. For example, like I always wanted to be a ballerina, but I can't dance at all. But just wanting to dance, like that actually told me a lot about myself. Told me that I was creative, artistic, competitive maybe, strong, ambitious, like performing. But I'm actually really good at singing and acting. But had I wasted all my time trying to learn to dance when I wasn't good at it, I would have never become good at singing or acting. So if you want to do something and you try and you fail and you realize it's not a possibility for you, if you look at all the characteristics that you do have that made you want to do that, it's quite possible that you can find something else that you would be good at. I think a lot of the time people limit themselves because of their eating disorder. I know I used to do that. It was like, I have an eating disorder, I can't do that. But I was doing that mostly out of fear. And I wanted to talk about one of my friends that I met through YouTube. Like, I won't say her name or anything because I'm pretty sure she does, doesn't want me to say that. But um, I don't usually seek out videos of people that are recovering, but for some reason this just caught my attention. I might have been searching for something else. I don't know. But she basically documented, like, her entire recovery journey. And even though she's not recovered, like, she's doing really well now. But it was so amazing to see her personality comes out come out um eating disorders take away so much from us that oftentimes we don't even know who we are because of them and i think that's part of why we limit ourselves because we have them but oh my gosh guys she is so funny like she got her car towed and she just made it hilarious and um she wanted us to ask questions for another video Literally, it took me like 20 minutes to type out like five questions because I was laughing so hard. She's such a good storyteller, like so funny, so articulate. And if she ever lets me like link that video, I will because it's hilarious. But it was really amazing to see her personality come out and I really love her. And it's so awesome that she's doing well. But it just shows like how much eating disorders take away and how much was hidden. Now I really like watching her videos because... They're so fun, and she's, like, so open to her experiences and things, and she just makes it seem like you're right there experiencing it with her, and she's such a good storyteller and so entertaining, and I just love watching her videos now, but I love how much her real personality has come out now and how much she's changed, like, she definitely inspires me, but, um, that video is hilarious, and so are a lot of her other videos. But she's a fabulous person, and I was telling her that it was so sad that she had an eating disorder, and I really hope that she got better, because it took away so much from her, and I think sometimes she has doubts of whether she'll recover or not, but I know that she will, because she's awesome, and she has so much determination to do so, so I know that she will, but she's really amazing. Um... And she's so authentic and so beautiful, but she um, helped me a lot because she made me realize that we all are. It's really important that we listen to our own voice and not the voices of others or society when we're trying to decide who we are or what we would like to do. Because when we go along with what other people would want, you're basically just squashing your own uniqueness in a way everyone's different and everyone's beautiful and being true to yourself allows other people to see that and it allows for you to be happy and to live your best life i hope you liked my video and that was helpful have a good night guys see you next time